another wonderful day at your favorite marketing class on Arctube. Favorite marketing class at your favorite YouTube channel. Now, we have covered four lessons. Lesson number one, two, three, four. And this is lesson number five. And we have discussed amply about branding, product management, product management portfolios, USPs, ESPs, CVP, and everything. If you can't remember that thing, always you can look back and go to that lessons and revise your knowledge. So in this lesson, lesson number five, we'll be discussing about and we'll be focusing on the communication mix. So communication mix will be used to operationalize these elements in the sense the concepts which you have learned. So in that case, uh, you need to have a good idea on this communication mix in this lesson. We'll be providing you with in-depth knowledge on communication mix. So it's about advertising, sales promotions, direct marketing, personal selling, then public relations and sponsorships. Lastly, it's about digital marketing. So I know that you can't wait anymore to watch and learn from Arctube lesson number five. Let's straight away go in there. Let's go. Come with me. Okay, let's straight away start from the communication mix. This is lesson number five, basics of marketing communication. Under the learning outcomes of this particular lesson number five, it is about the communication mix or the promotional mix. Uh, the main area, so the learning outcomes, the first one is compare and contrast the communication mix. Now, uh, after studying about this particular lesson, you'll be able to compare and contrast the communication mix elements. So in the next slide, we'll be uh, discussing about the communication mix elements and we'll be listing the communication mix elements. So you'll be able to compare and contrast this communication mix elements, right? Then the second one is classifying and assessment of communication tools. Now you will be having communication mix, but you need to have communication tools to operationalize this communication mix elements. Then thirdly, it's about application of communication tools in different contexts. Now, in some scenarios, so we'll be we'll be discussing about the scenarios and we'll be proving with examples now in what scenario you need to use what communications so what communication tools now in one scenario there are a set of communication tools that will be applicable for one scenario and for other scenario another scenario some other communication tools will be applicable lastly the fourth learning outcome of this lesson number five it's about managing corporate reputation via communication so uh, I think you can remember uh, we have discussed amply about the brand uh, reputation as well as brand identity, brand image and branding concepts. Likewise, you need to manage the corporate reputation as well. Right. So those are the learning outcomes of this lesson number five. Let's move into the communication mix starting from advertising. Now, uh, if you take the marketing mix, so marketing mix, it's about product price place promotion. Now, in this particular, uh, the course will be, will we have already discussed about the promotional mix and the promotion. So you can see like that's one element of marketing mix. So this marketing mix, that promotional element is, com is, uh, consists of this communication mix elements. Now, if you do know the communication mix, so you are unable to map those things and use the communication mix in communicating your brand identity, maybe the corporate reputation or the company's product launches. Likewise, you will be you you are unable to communicate that thing if you don't know or if you are unable to uh, manage your communication mix elements. So the first one under this one, it's about the communication mix advertising. So we'll be discussing about advertising in detail in the coming slides. So it can be TV advertising, it can be radio advertising, it can be mass media advertising. So we'll be uh, discussing about ATL, BTL, and TTL promotional elements as well. And then it's about sales promotions. I know that it's very much familiar to you. So you will be having the sales promotion elements and you'll be have you have encountered these sales promotions once you're living in the world. In the marketing scenario and you have come across this sales promotion but 
in this particular lesson, I'll tell you how to use this sales promotion element exclusively or maybe extensively to achieve your goals. Then the other thing is about the digital communication. So it's about digital marketing is there on one side and in on the other side, you'll be having digital communications. So you'll be having these communication elements. So it can be the internet, it can be your smart devices, it can be your internal systems, knowledge management systems, internal communication tools with digital digital integration. So that's about digital communication. So that matters a lot in communication mix as well. Then you'll be having the personal selling thing. So it's about what? It's about personal selling is what? So in the B2B scenario, that's business to business scenario, the personal selling also will be applicable. So that will help you in understanding, okay, or what products that I'm going to promote under personal selling and how I'm going to position my brand under personal selling where the employer brand and the employee brand that will be uh, elaborated in personal selling as well. So we'll be discussing uh, of those things, discussing about those things when it comes to personal selling as well. Then you'll be having public relations and sponsorships as well. So you need to have these public relations and sponsorships to work out your profiling strategy. We'll be discussing about this profiling strategy when it comes to lesson number five. Uh, in profiling strategy, you will be raising your brand image where it will enable you to manage your corporate reputation. So in that case, then you'll be having, lastly, it's about direct marketing. So direct marketing, we know that all direct marketing, traditional direct marketing, that's about do to do. But uh, in today's context, WhatsApp message, maybe a text message, maybe an email. So that will fall into direct marketing as well. So that's a brief idea of about the communication mix. Now, in, we'll be discussing about this communication mix elements one by one, one by one, when it comes to uh, the future slides. You can see this promotional objectives thing. Now, promotional objectives. Now, once you have this promotional objectives, you need to know where these promotional objectives are originating from. Now, you can see there's a cascading effect where the communication objectives are derived from the marketing objectives and the marketing objectives are derived from the corporate objectives. So that means the promotional objectives are derived from what? Communication objectives. Now, it is a point that the, your group or corporate group is having some objectives like achieving their revenue targets and the profit targets where that has to be in line the promotional objectives has to be in line with the corporate objectives otherwise the company will go somewhere else and your promotional objectives will achieve something else so in that case you need to have this the relationship of these objectives so that means what you need to have your marketing objectives which are smart which are smart, that's my specific, measurable, assignable, um, uh, assignable, achievable, as well as the assignable or achievable, realistic and time bound. So you'll be having corporate objectives, then you'll be deriving the marketing objectives from there. From the marketing objectives, you'll be having the communication objectives. Then from communication objectives, you are going to get the promotional objectives. So if you develop your communication objectives and the promotional objectives in part with the corporate objectives, your plan campaign will be in par with the company's vision and mission, where it will enable you to manage your corporate reputation. So you need to take that into consideration. Otherwise, it will be very hard for you because you need to know the relationship of these things. All right. So uh, that's about the promotional objectives uh, setting and we are having something called the drip model so this will be helpful for you in developing promotional objectives now in the drip model it's again like the traditional hierarchical models of ida but it's bit a uh, bit uh, different than that so for, uh, the first 
D, it's about the differentiate. Now, how we are going to differentiate yourself from the market competition? Market competition, then as well as how we are going to differentiate you from the benefits and the value additions you, are, you will be providing to customers or your stakeholders. So you need to differentiate yourself. Once you're differentiating yourself, you need to remind them now, for an example, let's say you are going to broadcast one of your advertisements in a particular channel. So in that case, in order to remind that thing, you need to have an integrated approach of approaching this the target audience. So in that case, what you could do is, uh, right, okay, in the TV advertisement, I'm going to target my audience like that. Then in the radio advertisement, I'm going to target the same audience like this. And in the newspaper advertisement, I'm going to target this uh, target my ta same target audience like this so it will be integrated thing so that will be what the same message will be transferred or communicated to that particular target audience so that there will be a reminding thing or reassuring thing that your differentiating factor will be reminded so in that case customers will not forget your advertisement right customer will not forget your advertisement so then what will be there so you will be informing okay what are the benefits that you are going to get so let's say the value propositions you have then the cost benefit analysis and you will be giving these things the customers because of the reminding thing customers will be searching for these things and you'll be giving this information out so that's about informing that thing after informing that thing there will be persuasion so customers will be persuaded to what make an action maybe a trial maybe a repeat purchase maybe a purchase right now you may have seen some persuasive advertisements when it comes to uh, the fitness uh, equipment so we know that normally once it comes to people they don't have that normally people they don't have six pack right six pack or maybe uh, the uh, the uh, uh, a body like a professional trainer, uh, a body shape like a professional bodybuilder or something like that. But in the advertisement, it shows a professional bodybuilder or professional model who acts there. He has his the body build which persuades persuades the target audience that okay if i am getting that thing okay i'm also going to have that thing call this number call this number so the once the advertisement is going okay call this number you can get a similar shape like that so that's about persuasive so it's about what differentiating reminding informing persuading so that's about the drip model and this drip model will be helpful for you to set up your promotional then you'll be having the promotional types. So you'll be having ATL, then you'll be having BTL, and you have TTL and permission. Now, once it comes to ATL, it's about above the line promotions. Now, advertising, now, if once you discuss about this advertising, or maybe the above the line promotion, now, advertising placed in media, now, if you are explaining that thing, advertising placed in paid for media such as print let's say it can be newspaper and magazines maybe on radio tv cinema and outdoor or transport poster sites the line the line the above the line and below the line we say like that the line refers to the uh, refers to the line in an ad advertising agency's accounts the figure above the line represents the commission it makes from buying the media space for clients the commission that I mean, make it a point to remember that means what the line refers to the line in an advertisement's accounts. The figure above the line represents the commission it makes from buying media space for the clients. Then, what about below the line thing? So, it's about a blanket term for a range of non commission earning marketing communication activities such as sales promotions and direct marketing. And the agency's fees for these appear below the line in their accounts so it's again the line below the line that will appear then you are having something called ttl that's about through the line communication or through the line promotions a more recent strategic approach that involves both of the above 
through the line communication allows for consistent integrated strategy across all media including digital media these days we are more likely to call this approach multi-channel or omni-channel marketing now can you remember in the drip model i have told you that you need to have this integrated approach and uh, remind the target audience through different channels so this is what i was talking about then the last thing is about permission marketing now it implies the need to treat customers with respect recognize their right to refuse to be bombarded with product and service offerings but once customers have customers have agreed to being targeted you can direct tailored and relevant messages at them this term was popularized by u.s digital guru seth godin in his book permission marketing in 1999 now we need to pay respect in uh, I mean, found, find, finding this permission marketing thing for this Seth Goodin that's about US Digital Guru. So that's about 1999, how many years back, right? Now, because of these gurus, we are talking and teaching you about these promotional types. So that's about promotion. You have something called broad groups to be targeted. Now, it is a fact that you need to have some good uh, what some uh, good uh, in the sense like some better target narrow down target audience for your uh, promotional campaign or marketing communication campaign but again this narrowing down has to be taken from these broad groups uh, broad groups of stakeholders now it can be the consumer markets so you can have the STP segmentation, targeting and positioning for consumer markets. For distribution channels, you can have it, right? For stakeholders, we talked about stakeholders, internal connected and external stakeholders in lesson number one. And you can always segment these broad segments of consumers, distribution channels and stakeholders. Once you segment these things, you will be able to target them with proper communication mechanisms and position your brand inside their mind in a correct way. So it, it won't be over or under position, it will be correctly positioned. So in that case, make it a point to have a good understanding of these broad groups to be targeted so that will be easy for you because if you do not know from which group I'm going to target, so here's a fact for you. So this is about broad groups to be targeted. It's about consumers, it's about distribution channels, or it can be stakeholders. Okay, now we are coming into the advertising. Advertising. So now once we uh, refer uh, or once we discuss about advertising, we can't forget what? We can't forget? the american marketing association why we can't forget american marketing association because they have given a what good definition on advertising right now once you uh, hear the word advertising as per this american marketing association the advertising they say the placement of announcement and persuasive messages in the time of space purchased in any form of mass media by business from firms, non-profit organizations, government agencies, and individuals who seek to inform or persuade members of particular target market or audience about their products, services, and organization or ideas. So this is according to what? The American Marketing Association 2017. Now that's association now once we look at about advertising what are the things you know about advertising now it can be the radio advertising it can be the mass media advertising it can be the social media advertising as well now in that case if you uh, right talk about this advertising thing now you can see that advertising has changed dramatically now advertising is again falling again uh, according to the IDA model as well, awareness, interest, desire. Now, through advertising, you can 
you can operationalize other promotional mix elements as well now for an example let's say you have a sales promotion thing so you are going to communicate that through sales promotion thing through advertising so that's type of advertising again so likewise we we have talked about atl btl and ttl so those advertisements will be fall into atl btl and ttl as well now now if you can remember if you go into youtube and watch uh, the advertising or creative advertisements which has been uh, displayed by mcdonald's coca-cola and the first drinkable advertisement they have uh, launched in uh, i think it's about five to six years back for coca-cola so in that case advertising is very much important and uh, that's again now though we say it's about traditional media when it comes to tv advertising i can say like still today in tv advertising that has a remarkable remarkable portion though it is very costly it has a remarkable portion right now uh let's look into advertising again okay let's uh, look into advertising again now once we uh, now i have told you about traditional advertising but this traditional advertising can be highly effective for many different purposes usually for a large target audience for example it can be like to promote uh, a create a desired image in public pu public consciousness so that can be used and uh, it can represent a call to action and remind and reassure people that it's going to come with uh, with regard to your organization software as well as you'll be having uh, support other promotional tools as including pr and direct marketing and sales promotions as well so i have told you about that then the count and negative public opinion so we have we have seen that the advertising is counting negative public opinion in some cases right then uh, it can reach large audience very quickly when it comes to advertising so that's mass media then uh, be the least expensive medium in absolute cost terms what do you mean by that least cost terms but but anyway i'm not going to you are not going to agree with me because of least cost because the production cost and the media buying and media negotiation media that slot is very much costly for you but in advertising case let's say it's about cost per million or cost per thousand so in that case so the, the per customer cost or per viewer cost or per target audience cost will be very much lower than other things like you now once we talk about the other promotional mix elements advertising is far lower than that once it comes once you view in that angle right now we are going to discuss about sales promotions so in the slide you can see once you say promotions it has 50 30 percent off 50 percent off now you can see in uh, hotel industry as well now since the covid is there uh, so they are targeting uh, now we are coming into the new normal and they are targeting uh, these particular target groups with discount offers right now once we uh, once we discuss about sales promotions sales promotions provide added value and offering with the aim of accelerating sales and gathering marketing information provide an extra benefit uh, benefits offer for a limited time period it is usually seen as a short-term tactical tool for generating trial repeat purchase for both for for both or both for example but it can devalue your brand image integrating sales promotion with direct marketing uh, i think that however can be highly effective now sales promotions now once we discuss about sales promotion it's for a particular short time period now you can't have sales promotions throughout the year so it can't be it can, it can erode your profit margins so i have seen some organizations that are using these promotions i mean everywhere that they can so in that case their profit margins are going to go very low so their future is in very risk so that means like you are not covering your what the production cost so if you don't cover your production cost how are you going to break even so more you sell more you more you have the sales promotions period like for one year so that means you the more you do sales promotion the more you're going to make losses for long period so sales promotions also can be used to defend your shelf space and uh, add interest in the store 
and control demand especially during low seasons and instill a sense of urgency such as buy now then price discriminates among customer segments and that can be used in that way and there are disadvantages as well now you will be having wastage the old adage that my half advertising is wasted so there will be there will be the disadvantages as well now it can be like the sales promotions i have told you it can be a waste if you are going to target a wrong customer base wrong customer base with sales promotion you are not going to get sales out of that so call to action will not be there so you need to identify correct target audience for the correct sales promotion so it can be a disadvantage when it comes to sales promotion now we'll be discussing about public relations and sponsorships now in here in the slide you can see uh, how this uh, formula one that uh, the vehicle that racing car how it has been sponsored you have yokohama there you have jbl and gk likewise that's there and on the other side of the slide you can see some blue color bicycles has been sponsored by uh, have been sponsored by bicycles have been sponsored by linkedin so that's about public relations sponsorships now uh, public relations can be exceptionally powerful weapon particularly in b2b context that's about business to business context it seeks to promote goodwill and build mutual understanding across all various publics pr encompasses events lobbying crisis management image building and lead generation all at a lower cost than advertising the pr department is often responsible for internal marketing too pr is seen as one of the most credible forms of promotion which makes it a good tool to manage corporate reputation and crisis it also use it is also a useful tool for reaching specific audiences companies use pr to create publicity or earn media however pr is subjected to many variables and is therefore hard to manage and you can see uh, chartered institute of marketing 2014 defines pr as the function or activity that aims to establish and protect the reputation of the company or brand and to create mutual understanding between the organization and the segments of public with whom it needs to communicate now that's about the cim's definition and pr works with at least 10 different audiences at least 10 different audiences. so it can be worked with the community potential employees as well as employees suppliers of services and materials investors distributors consumers customers then as well as opinion leaders and trade unions the media so it can be at least work with these stakeholders or these stakeholders or different audience groups and the pr tools includes what are the tools that you can include in pr so that's about press releases you will be having press conferences public relations the publications then you will be having media relations events annual reports lobbying internal public relations and social media channels as well when it comes to pr tools so that's about all about public relations and sponsorships then we are going to discuss about personal selling now once you hear the word personal selling there's something which is personalized so this is often associated associated with face to face activities but increasingly this contact may occur via other methods of communication such as teleconference video conference etc its advantages include following so it can win high customer attention personal selling you can customize the message as well as you can interactivity improves the understanding and it's very persuasive you can use it to develop the relationships can you remember once you once you talk about relationship the ladder of loyalty is the story so we discussed about in in that uh, discussed about that in lesson number four you can adapt it to different circumstances as well then it offers better opportunity to close the sale it offers what better opportunity to close the sale and there are disadvantages as well when it comes to personal selling it is uh, labor intensive and involves high cost per contact 
one compared to the taxi and time consuming so it can reach only limited number of cost customers it requires training and flair as well as it requires careful planning that's about personal selling so personal selling is very costly but again what you could do is once personal selling is co costly but the return is also what return is also very high so it's not like sales promotions personal selling is very long term so once you build the relationship with trust and commitment you'll what the sky is the limit for you so i am i am having that experience so if you have a good network through personal selling you're on the ball that's it right so i think this is a good element that if you if organizations can use mm, that's it for you to discuss about direct marketing so the other form of now in personal selling we are going to promote that thing in b2b so this is direct marketing it can be used to b2c that's about business to consumer direct marketing seeks to build one-to-one -one relationships it does by is does this by analyzing individual custom information creating databases devising creating uh, creative strategy and personalizing the message that requires an individual desire di individual direct response direct marketing is market uh, is a marketing channel without intermediaries and is the fastest growing in the marketing right now but again i need to uh, mention about this one if you may do manage direct marketing the wrong information will be going to customers and i have received the wrong message like saying like okay though i am having uh, some service station has uh, the my car service station they have sent me a message on a wrong day a wrong day uh, say like okay mrs uh, c uh, happy birthday on the wrong day so that screws all that screws the direct marketing and the meaning of that direct marketing has been enhanced over the recent past by digital marketing which essentially about applying internet technologies to the sales and distribution of products and services as well as beginning uh, as well as being a medium for communicating with marketplace digital marketing covers all form of digital media and communication including mobile devices uh, forms of direct marketing if you take as an example so it can be up to some personal selling as well as it can be the direct mail as well as still the most common form you will be having snail mail there and kiosk marketing either pop-up type you can have kiosk marketing and you will be having telemarketing now these are less popular these days and you can use this viral email thing email marketing can be used as direct form of direct marketing and direct response tv and catalog marketing like it's convenient and offers ready to access for huge range of products then company blogs right you can use company blogs for direct marketing as well as internet e-commerce website are interactive and immediate as well as mobile marketing including smartphones text messages and tablets currently enjoying a, a boom and a set to become increasingly significant and develop further help help helped by more uh, ubiquitous uh, 5g technology and uh, it is go beyond which expected to uh, expect to start rolling out globally like 2025 when it comes to 5g and beyond now uh, for example uh, let's say once it comes to direct marketing and the 5g thing if you need to know about 5g you can always count on what is 5g there are there's a video series for that thing as well in arctu you can refer that thing as well if you need to know about more about 5g and direct marketing actually you can use uh, with great effect to personalize offers by using existing customer rights then target prospects who had uh, had previous contact with the company and target risk averse customers as well as target customers looking for high level of service target customers who's looking for high level of service and there are a few disadvantages for direct marketing provided uh, campaigns are well structured and integrated with other promotional tools such as advertising nevertheless some things can go wrong nevertheless some things can go wrong, wrong always fault or out of date are uh, out of date or ill-conceived databases so i have told you about that thing right now ill-conceived database because of that i have received the wrong message then poorly crafted direct message direct marketing goes straight into junk folders now how many emails you receive per day and it go all goes into junk or if you see anything that's about shift dealing that's it then 
with changes in data protection laws about GDPR, data, data protection laws due to take in effect of uh, like that it has already taken in May 2018, direct marketing may become more uh, important channels once more. So you need to discuss and you need to focus on these data protection laws when it comes to direct marketing. Now we have seen now social media platforms are there, but they are using this our cost consumer databases and consumer uh, sensitive data in order to uh, manipulate other business objectives. So that's about direct. And we are coming now into digital communications. Now, once you uh, discuss about digital communications, it's about all, not all about social media, but it's about planning your digital communications. Now, once you have the advertising, now the advertising has been digitalized. How? Now you have seen once you are going into a, let's say, website, how many, how many advertisement that has been put in place? Let's say now, once you go into website, they'll be putting you cookies. And once you start from there, they'll be pushing cookies to your, uh, what, the laptop or the desktop or the tab. And they'll be popping up the advertising, which is what? mapping according to your desire so that's again personalized a direct marketing coming now everything is integrated again now once you see the advertisement that is related to you that is according to the past advertisement which you have or past buying patterns which you have done in the internet so they'll be popping up a particular offer so that's sales promotion advertisement comes again that's advertisement then personalized message comes in that's personal selling so public relations comes in so that's all things has been or all things have been what digitally integrated so that's very complex but you need to have this integrated communication and you can integrate thing integrate that communication through digital communications very 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 easily not like all days if you plan it well, the sky is the limit for you. So that's about digital communications. But again, we'll be discussing about digital communication and digital marketing in another lesson. That means you will be having lesson six or lesson, I mean, some of good lessons. So in that case, we'll be discussing about digital communications there. Marketing thing. Now, once you, uh, it's about Guerrilla marketing, if you uh, really focus on that thing, it covers all kinds of all alternative media, including street art and uh, fly posting. Sometimes some of the some of them are illegal as well, which means brands are taking a risk in getting involved. So that means it's like an ambush. Sometimes it is illegal. Uh, but it will make your customer surprise than reminded. So I really thought like you'll be needing some uh, ideas about that. That's why I've gone behind and uh, told you about that. So cost credibility, uh, uh, communication and control. This is about forces model, which will be enable you to compare and contrast with the media. So cost is about how much will the campaign cost in both absolute and relative terms. Now cost per thousand contacts or cost per million what production costs are involved so you can compare and contrast about that and you will be having credibility this all this all important factor derives from the channel and the proximity to relevant program content and the popularity and the credibility of the associated program this affects uh, this this effects uh, are similar with magazines and radio now credibility of course let's say now you are going for a source uh, let's say if the TV channel is very reliable, so you can have good credibility there. So if you can, you know, I mean, include a reputed celebrity in uh, in your advertisement, the credibility credibility will go up. So if your brand image is very much uh, very much higher and very much stronger, so the credibility will be very much higher now. But again, you need to see the motives of the source as well. So if the motives of the source are not in, coming in par with the brand, there will be a big problem. So that's about credibility and you'll be having communication. Uh, so that's about communication effectiveness, which media can deliver the message 
uh, in most effective way this considers how the target audience can be reached and by which communication method so it can be audio or visual so likewise then you'll be having control that's about how much control the advertiser has over the environment their message appear within both in terms of what both in terms of surrounding content and the noise within the environment that could influence how the message is received so that's cost credibility communication and control now you can see the relative effectiveness of different promotional tools in terms of their ability to influence purchase behavior now while personal selling is obviously not the best way to gain mass public awareness when it comes to uh, now let's say when it comes to nitty-gritty of closing a uh, sale it is most it is the most effective way particularly in business to business context where the value of sale is high and the decision making process is likely to be lengthy and complex and involve multiple decision makers the personal selling will be much effective so that's again scenario by scenario okay then you'll be having the stages of product life cycle but not the stages of product life cycle i mean like you will you can uh, remember we have talked about stages of product life cycle but this particular graph is representing the effectiveness of uh, the communication mix elements now let's see uh, what the graph says now one axis you will be having the level of effectiveness and the other axis you will be having purchase decision sequence and you will be having awareness consideration and purchase awareness consideration and purchase now let's see what is this line so that's about personal selling now you can see uh, we have we have discussed the personal selling is going up there from level lower level of awareness to the high level of uh, purchase so it's about relationship building and going ahead with personal selling then it comes to the direct marketing you can see the awareness is very much higher the level of effectiveness is uh, when it comes to awareness the level of effectiveness is very much higher but for the purchase it is lower than the personal selling and once we look at the sales promotion you can see the awareness levels with the start it's going to be lower but when it comes to purchase it is going to be what lower than direct marketing and personal selling but it's in a good level of effectiveness now once it comes to public relations the awareness is very much higher but the driving purchase it's very much lower once it comes to advertising the awareness is very much higher very much higher once it comes to purchase the same offer is not there sometimes whereas the person selling is going to be much credible in some scenario advertising is much credible in some scenario so this is an example for you to how to use the four c's model now this is according to one scenario uh, we have developed this graph so this is about the effectiveness of the promotional mix elements when once it comes to awareness consideration and purchase decision All right okay then uh, the communication tools in different contexts now every communication tool is not going to help you for all context now it can be depending on the size of the market now if you're having a size of a market like a niche market for you you're not going to have mass media advertising where you can always go ahead with personal selling niche market right then the size of the organization now if you are a very 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 big organization or very little organization which are having about three to four staff you are not going to go for mass media advertising you can't have and you can afford that mass media advertising sometimes but yeah you can do you can go for digital uh, advertising and you can do it for ten dollars or five dollars uh, to reach large target audience then it is a fact that your target audience has to be uh, differentiated and target audience has to be identified before um, using different context because now let's say you are going to target rural areas where the most popularity most uh, target or most of the target audience is using uh, traditional tv or reading some newspapers so in that case if you are going on social media you can't attract them so you need to know about target audience and what they watch and what they do and the complexity of purchase so you need to do that because if you are pitching a complex product for you mass or media advertising will not be helpful be helpful for you where the personal selling will be helpful for you and role of intermediary 
So we'll be need to know, like, can you remember the broad target audience we need to target? That's about the distribution channels and all that. So role of intermediary also you need to take into consideration when it comes to communication tools in different contexts. You'll be having this organizational context. This is about uh, the business to be business consumer or it can be business to business it can be non-profit it can be for the government sector consumer to business government business or consumer to business so these are the things you have in organizational context for b2b or nail it's about b2b we talked about now it's about b2c it's about mostly in uh, fast moving consumer goods markets so you can use these tools it's about sponsorships point of presence public relations direct mail uh, and you can use product placements, corporate identity, advertising, trade promotions, and digital and packaging and voucher codes for B2B in FA. Now, consumer decision making process is straightforward. You will be having, now, let's say you need to buy something from somewhere. You need to buy something from somewhere. Let's say I need to buy, a, 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 I need to buy an Audi, right? I need to buy an Audi. So what is the problem recognition? Okay, I have sold my old car. I need to buy an Audi, right? Problem recognition. Then I'm going to search information. Okay, Audi, what are the models they have for SUVs? Then I'm going to search on, okay, Q2, they are starting with Q3, Q4 and all that. So information search is there. Then I'm going to call my friends and I'm going to search on internet and I'm going to call the dealer or the manufacturer of the vehicle and ask about how the thing is doing and then it comes to evaluation of alternatives okay i'm going to buy an audi q2 or q3 or q5 or q7 and <clears throat> how's the fuel consumption of that thing and i'll be then what are the prices of that thing how's the warranty goes on how's the durability of that thing how's the class of that thing then i'm going to make decision out of that thing to make okay i'm going to buy audi q5 then okay then i'm going to buy q5 the post purchase evaluation will be there okay is it going fine okay the service is going service is okay and the driving safety is there i'm going to evaluate myself for post purchase and in future buying decision making process that will be comes in handy for problem recognition so that's about consumer decision making process the business decision making process so business to business how it goes on let's say now one organization is not need to get some servers from another organization let's say you are going for ibm and you are a telecommunication company you are going to get some servers from ibm or maybe let's say sun solaris you're going for to buy some servers from sun solaris so a problem recognition comes where i need to uh, store my uh, billing database there so in that case i need to uh, get sun solaris because of their safety so problem recognition is there develop product specifications okay what are the specifications that the uh, server is going to have and how about uh, the warranties and all that thing and search for sourcing what the supplies available for sun and solar uh, server provides and evaluation it's about uh, suppliers are there so you can take supply abc and search evaluation okay sun solaris is there you can use Zeti, you can use Wabi, you can use Cisco. Likewise, you will be having evaluations and the more appropriate options. Okay, I'm going with Sun Solaris because of their reliability and the efficiency. So it can be then you are going to, after the post purchase, you are going to do the performance evaluation. Okay, it's working fine for me. In my, in the another in another buying decision, I'm going for Sun Solaris likewise. So that's about business to business and business to consumer. Now, once it comes to business decision making unit, you will be having this initiator, influencer, decider, user, gatekeeper, buyer, and the approvers. Now, for an example, let's say now you are going to buy something and you are going to do your personal selling in promoting your insurance scheme or promoting your credit cards. Now, in that case, uh, in promoting your credit card, you will be using an influencer influencer let's say a guy you know uh, a friend you know from your mba class is working in that particular organization and you are working at the bank so you'll be having him as an influencer to get a chance to approach his boss and there will be a gatekeeper who's the gatekeeper the boss's private personal assistant and he, she keeps the gate closed then you are going to build a relationship with her a business relationship with her and get through the boss so you are going to the decider for that thing and the user is what 
who's going to use that thing employees of that company and the buyer is what the employees of that company initiator is who the personal not the personal one your friend then there will be approvals that can be the approvals of the board of directors of the general managers of the organization so that's business decision making unit and if you need further clarification of the business decision making unit in some scenarios you can always count on us and you can send us emails then i'll be explaining you that thing again these are some of questions for you. So what are the reasons for wastage in TV advertising? So in this one, so these are easy questions. Then how sales promotions can be used in B2B context? So we talked about B2C, how we are going to use this sales promotion in B2B context. So that will be easy for you to manage the decision making process as well as decision making unit as well. Then compare, compare how personal selling is used in B2B and B2C compare how personal selling is used in b2b and b2c you can you can compare and contrast it by using uh, using the forces model then how can the efficiency of different media to be measured so we have looked at uh, that uh, the graph we we looked at that graph uh, how it looks like but make it a point to, to uh, use a scenario when, once you're answering these questions. It's a must. And identify four online and offline marketing communication tools that could be used by your organization to build your brand reputation. How to structure that answer? So how, once you are structuring the answer, you need to know your organization's current situation in order to have that online and offline plan, that online and offline thing. Then you need to analyze your organizational context as well as products and services and their benefits, the unique selling proportion of that products and service as well as emotional selling proportions of that products and services. Then under the second category, you need to target like whom you're targeting at, whom you're targeting at and define your target on who are they, what they do, and sub-segment and anticipated positioning. You need to have anticipated position. Otherwise, you really don't know how you're going to do that. Now, for an example, sub-segment is what? Now, let's say your target audience is falling into 20 to 30. So sub-segment that thing into age categories. And you can target that thing and narrow it down and there can be personless approach for that thing. Then the last point is what? How to map? suitable tools to achieve business objectives now can you remember we 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 discussed about corporate property from the how the promotional objectives and the business objectives are coming corporate objectives are there then the marketing objectives are there and then the communication objectives are there then lastly the promotional objectives are there so which online and offline tools you are going to use now all online and offline tools you can't use it's according to your target audience then suitability of suitability analyzed to forces model now Cost, credibility, communication, and control has to be that the forces model is there. You need to analyze that thing through forces model as well. Now that's all about how to structure the answer. We're going to end the communication mix. Hope now you are having a good understanding and in-depth understanding on the communication mix and the practical application of them. Hope that you will use this knowledge in your practical life as well in your organizations as well as your life we'll be meeting again in lesson number six with a lot of surprises